What is happening, Magnusites? So, the mighty drinker himself has weighed in on Fallout, which I am still watching. I plan on doing the third episode today. So far, it's all right. Let's see what he has to say. I trust his views as they align pretty closely with mine most of the time. Now, you definitely don't need me to tell you that video game adaptations have got a rocky history. For every Last <laughs> of Us, there's a Resident Evil. <laughs> you know, Stuckman actually did a video where he was, uh, I think he was basically debunking the fact that video game movies and stuff are bad. I saw it a while ago. I think he actually made a good argument. I think what maybe has us thinking that they're so bad is um, maybe certain popular ones didn't go over well. Um, but there were other ones that did that were pretty good uh, that maybe flew under the radar type of thing. I'm not sure. I have to go watch it again. But I do remember kind of being like, hmm, ah, all right, you're right. That was... That was right, but yeah, uh, especially recently though, um, yeah, some, <sighs> definitely some hit or miss stuff here. <laughs> Halo and Monster Hunter. Terrible. Not you though, Street Fighter. You'll always have a special place in my heart. Of course! Everyone loves that. For me, it was Tuesday. Like, everyone loves that line. That movie is so horrible to me. And I remember when it first came out, I was such a Street Fighter fan that my first viewing of it, just getting anything Street Fighter, I deluded myself into believing that it was good. And I saw it again. It's kind of like, hmm. Then I talked to my friends about it afterwards and more realization slipped in. And then over the years, I was just like, Jesus. However... There were some funny lines in this movie. There were some funny lines in this movie, but I, I can't believe they they made it as horrible as they did. It's just, it's... Mortal Kombat was way better. Mortal Kombat, I think, was a hit in the theaters when it came out, so... That was beautiful. <laughs> Latimer. The point is, though, we're seeing a lot more attempts to bring popular gaming... You guys want to get a testosterone surge? Get the program. The movie called The Program. It's a football movie called The Program. It's a college football movie called The Program. To me, it is my favorite football movie that I've ever seen. I know most people's, it's like any given Sunday or something like that. No. And it's mainly because of Latimer. I like the rest of it too, mainly because of Latimer. You, if you ever, you don't have it to work out. Watch all the Latimer highlights. Probably can find them on YouTube. You'll work out that day. Trust me. A place at the table! Trust me. Franchises to the big and small screen these days. And while it opens up a lot of possibilities for awesome adaptations of popular <laughs> stories, it also gives Hollywood a lot of potential to screw up even more beloved IPs. Case in point, the Fallout series, a post-apocalyptic RPG adventure game that's been on the go since the 1990s, spanning almost a dozen titles, and with a fan base so dedicated and passionate that they make the Snyder Bros look like tourists. So I think it's fair to say that Amazon took on a bit of a challenge with this one. I mean, this is the same studio that gave us pretty decent shows like Reacher and Terminal List, but also produced Rings of Power. Yeah. Let me know this. Uh, can you play the other Fallouts? I, maybe I should try Fallout 76 again. I heard they really made some adjustments there that really made it a good game. I loved Fallout 4. And there's people out there to say Fallout 4 really wasn't that great. I loved it. So, um, just let me know if you can uh, play any of the other Fallouts besides 76 on the PS5. And I don't mean streaming it. You know what I mean? And no, no PlayStation Plus membership to do it. I mean, can you buy it and play it? Let me know. Ah! <laughs>
<laughs> Not only that, but the show was being headed up by Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, best known for creating Westworld, which was absolutely fantastic for precisely one season before it absolutely fell off a cliff. Could we dare to hope for a show that would do justice to the rich and detailed world of Fallout? Would they manage to capture the dark satirical comedy undertones of the games? And would they be able to keep it free from the message? <laughs> it really felt like the gods of entertainment flipped a coin with this one, and the fan base held its collective breath. And well, I'm happy to say that the gamble paid off in this case. So far, I've seen that, uh, and I, you, if you watch my review, you, you know. Uh, you definitely saw the DEI and ESG boxes being checked off. I saw people in the comments like, I, 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 I didn't say nothing. That's because you don't know what to look for. Go read, go read all of the rules that like Elon had posted. That yeah, go then you'll see it all. You'll see it all. However, um, there's a way to do that and still make something good. And one thing that people were saying, which is absolutely true, is that you were like, okay, you were seeing the boxes being checked. However, you weren't seeing it overshadow the story, which is what the dumb crap is, is that they've been doing. No one has ever had a problem with diversity. The majority of fans have never had a problem with diversity. Okay. And equality in films and everything else. It's just when all this stuff overshadows this main story, it's like, okay, time to be preached to again. Here we go. I noticed in these first two episodes, they weren't really doing that. So I was like, okay, well, let's, let's continue. So I trust a drinker here. Sounds like it may be worth finishing. More or less, Fallout is a surprisingly good adaptation that kept me intrigued and entertained for all eight episodes, delivers a trio of main characters played by capable actors that I quickly found myself rooting she for. She got some big eyes, don't she? It feels she like looks like an anime Sabbath character. Replicating the look, tone and feel of a pretty complex game universe. It's not perfect by any means, it doesn't always find the right balance between satirical humour and compelling drama, and the sparse world building is probably going to be exactly like an anime character coming out, right? Played the games, but for the most most part, well, I liked it. So grab your pit boy and your rat away and let's get started. The series takes place roughly 200 years after a nuclear war wiped out most of the human race. The bulk of the survivors live in giant underground fallout shelters known as vaults, constructed before the war as a means of preserving the American way of life and eventually rebuilding civilization. This is where we meet our main character, Lucy, from Vault 33, mm -hmm. part of a trio of vaults that are linked together, allowing them to trade and communicate with each other from time to time. Unfortunately, things go wrong on her wedding night when... I remember thinking that that was strange. I, I don't remember seeing anything like that done in Fallout 4. I don't know if it was done in any of the other Fallout games, but I was like, the vaults are connected? You know what I mean? Like, that threw me off. Raiders from the surface infiltrate her vault and kidnap her father. Determined to get him back, she ventures up to the surface to track down his kidnappers and rescue him. Unfortunately, the wasteland above is a very different world from the one she grew up in, and pretty soon she has to contend with mutated monsters, cannibals, radiation exposure, killer robots, mercenaries, and bounty hunters. Mm, and this is where she runs yet. into the ghoul, a former Hollywood actor who got turned into an immortal mutated zombie when the bombs first fell and now makes a living as a bounty hunter. Rounding out the trio is Maximus, a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. It makes a lot of faces in this. It reminds me of Jonathan Majors, by the way. <laughs> so, tasked with recovering pre-war technology to help them rebuild civilization. All three of them end up hunting for a research scientist who escaped from a government facility after injecting himself with a mysterious substance that apparently has the power to change the world forever. It sounds like a basic setup, and it is, because it's... Ex Just so you guys know, there's this part, right, where something happens to that doctor's foot. And they fix it. And the way they fix it, I'm like, are you kidding me? That's how you fixed it? <laughs> um, and the way the guy reacts when something happens to his foot, it was like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You'd be able to hear me three miles away. There is no way I'd be behaving like that if that happened to my foot. By the way, in my review... First episode when I was saying it was gory. People were like, well, the game was gory. G -g -g -g. That's not what I meant. <laughs> what I meant is 
for TV, how, you know, a lot of, when they try to bring out a lot of these series, um, like, for example, people are always like, Blade should be rated R. You got what I'm saying? So, if you were to see a Blade series, and then you see that it's really gory, it would surprise you because they, you know, you know that when a lot of series come out, they don't tend to lean toward gore. They tend to taper it back. You got what I'm saying? So I was just surprised that they made it as gory as the game. Exactly the kind of overarching quest that would drive the events of most of the games. But just like in the games, the real meat of the experience is in all the little side stories, the quirky characters, the environmental storytelling, the simple look and feel of the world that you inhabit. Fallout's got all of this in spades, from the 1950s retro futuristic technology mm -hmm. to the golly gee whiz good old fashioned Americana <laughs> of the vault dwellers, to the dark humour and satire of atomic age optimism. The ghoul acts as a kind of narrative bridge between past and present, his former life as a Hollywood actor shown in a series of flashbacks that fill in the events leading up to the nuclear war mm, and hinting okay. at the true nature of what Vault Tech actually is. Find out a little bit this more about him. This stuff also ties in with a subplot in the present about the Vault Dwellers that have been left behind in Vault 33, gradually coming to suspect that all is not what it seems in their worlds. It's good stuff. I know the uh, conspiracy theories have something, theorists have something to say about Vault 33 being um, a focus. And it's brought home by an excellent performance by the always entertaining Walton Goggins, who basically has to play two very different versions of the same character. Maximus, on the other hand, is an idealistic young member of the Brotherhood who tries to do the right thing at first but gradually becomes disillusioned as he realises that he and his fellow recruits are used as cannon fodder. He seems like a weak character. With that name, Maximus, yeah, I hope he ends up living up to that name in the future. Uh, and it is interesting how the ghoul, like you saw him in the beginning, it's a much different personality that he has now. So I was like, it's, uh, it'd be interesting to see how he got that way. You could just say because of what he went through, but I would like to see specifically what made him how he is because it's night and day. He's a solid, decently developed character that you empathise with, who also has a few secrets of his own. But the star of the show is absolutely Lucy, who's plucky, likeable and human, instead of the ridiculous feminist power fantasy that I think we were all braced for. She starts out as gullible, naive and completely unprepared for what's out there, an easy victim for the ruthless savages on the surface. She actually gets her ass kicked multiple times, especially in the first few episodes. Mm -hmm. She yeah. makes lots of mistakes that often... Told you she wasn't a Mary Sue. She so. learns from them and gradually becomes more savvy and capable while still trying to hold on to her core belief in compassion and humanity. You see, boys and girls, back in my day, this is what we called character development. It used to be a real thing until about 10 years ago when Hollywood writers decided to just skip right to the end with none of the interesting stuff in between. Seriously though, Lucy's a charming <laughs> character that I find myself rooting for right away. I actually liked her optimistic and innocent attitude and credit to Ella Purnell for a great performance that showcases both strength and vulnerability. Give me a few more characters like this and I might just start to rethink my opinion on modern entertainment. Yeah, she's, she's way too naive when she comes out of there, boy. <laughs> if I had to level a few criticisms at the show, I'd say that the world building is probably going to be pretty impenetrable to non-gamers. There's a lot of outlandish stuff like the ghouls, the mm -hmm. Brotherhood, the Enclave, the 1950s aesthetic, and all the little in-jokes and references that probably deserve more explanation than they get. And I can't shake the feeling that the show relies a little too heavily on member berries for fans of the games. Also, and I know this is probably just a budgetary thing, but the supposed nuclear wasteland looks remarkably green and lush at times. Like, I don't remember there being trees and forests in the Fallout games. You can also tell that a lot of it was filmed in modern day cities that don't really resemble the aesthetic of the rest of the show. Yeah, you know what, they do have tree and for trees and forests in, fo in Fallout 4. Especially, I remember this part in the DLC, and I think I ended up stopped playing it because it it was glitching when the DLC first came out on the PS4. And I remember walking through some trees. I, re I remember that. So, uh, yeah, it's not like a lot. It's more like a wasteland, but yeah. But whatever. It probably wasn't made on a massive budget, so I can forgive a few visual shortcomings. 
Ultimately, I have to say that I enjoyed Fallout a lot more than I expected. It's not quite in the same league as Last of Us when it comes to compelling human drama, but weirdly, I think I actually had more fun with it. Just like the games, it delivers moments of grim horror and harsh survival, but never quite loses the dark satirical humour that underpins its worlds. And if you're a fan of the games, or you're willing to go into it with an open mind and the right expectations, then I think you'll have a lot of fun with Fallout. Okay. Anyway, cool. that's all I've got for today. Go away now. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. He worked for vault or something? Oh, I can't wait to see this now. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Good job, as usual, drinker. Get over there and subscribe to him. Tell him Tyrone Magnus sent you. If you enjoyed my thoughts on the review, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in the next video. 10 million subscribers. Woo!